Good evening, everyone, and um, welcome to the Monday, September 12th school committee meeting here at the Colbert School. We're going to move right into public comments. Um, I have a few signups. Um, Jeff and Emily Keene. I can actually come up to the microphone. Um, just a reminder to everybody that public comment is an opportunity for you to speak and you know, make a comment or discuss an issue. Uh, it's not a back and forth with the committee. We'll, we'll get back to you separately. Um, and just wanted to be clarify, just clarify that it's a it's a public comment. So. Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for having us here. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Keene, and I'm a resident of Braintree on Kendall Lab, and my daughter's a student at Self Middle School. As you all know, I was here at the June meeting. I'm sorry, at the July meeting. Um, and just to follow up on that, um, as Mr. Lee is aware, one of the students that was involved in the assault and battery on my daughter, on the school bus, and other incidents and after that, now transferred to Self Middle School as well. And that student is on the bus with my daughter. And since last Friday, as he is aware, has been harassing her and bullying her since last Wednesday. Um, and I just want to see, are we putting uh, monitors on the bus? Are we doing anything to protect our students on the buses? Are we doing anything to further protect our students within the buildings? I'm going to be a staunch advocate for all students of Braintree to ensure there's full safety in all of these schools. I can't stress that enough. And I, we have serious concerns about that safety. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, Thank you. Emily? We'll follow up with you. Oh, does Emily wants to say Emily wants to say something. Yep. Um, like my dad said, at my school, there was this girl who was not being very nice. She used to be my friend, but now she's not being very nice. She is swearing at me. She's talking at me. She's not being very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Chris and Angela Peters. Yeah. So my name is Chris. Uh, my kids, this is my wife, Angela. Our kids go to Flaherty School. Uh, we were recently made aware uh, that my children, ages eight and nine, were asked to present themselves, their names, their full names, and um, their preferred pronouns in front of the class. This is unacceptable to me. My kids barely know how to use pronouns, and bringing the idea of gender theory within the classroom is a little too early for that age group. We have sent emails to the principal. The principal emailed us back and said um, that this was like an isolated incident, and it was kind of like, I don't know, kind of gloss over as if them not, they didn't actually have to say their pronouns in front of the class, which is not true. Our children have been told that they were they they were asked their full names and their preferred pronouns, and they went around the classroom. We've talked talk to many parents about this. A lot of the parents have shown uh, extreme anger and frustration. We just found out, like, this is kind of new, and we just found out that there's a school committee meeting tonight. So I think a lot more parents are... I expect more emails. They expect there. more out of the school, and I guess more of the truth as to what's going on. Um, to me, that is unacceptable. I think a lot of other parents actually agree with us. And going forward, we need an explanation and probably an apology, and it needs to absolutely cease. Otherwise, um, I am i don't really know where to go from there. Did you want to add anything? Um, yes, um, I know that most of you have gotten the email from us. Um, mine is a very lengthy email, so I'm not gonna go into all the bullet points and things that I brought up. Um, but as a summary, my husband is, is correct. So we just learned about this Saturday. Um, there was, um, I think a para uh, that was sent to each and every classroom. Um, as far as I know, first grade, third grade, and fourth grade. So I'm assuming most grades. And she went in, um, explained that it's important to address people correctly in the way that they want to be addressed. Um, she asked them all to go around and um, announce their names with the correct pronunciation. 
and their preferred pronouns. Um, I have spoken to my children independently and I've spoken to parents of other children and all the children answered the same way. That's what they were asked to name them, to say their name and their pronouns. And they went around the room and all took turns. Um, there are many reasons why this is inappropriate. You've gotten the emails, most of you. Um, at the top of the list is this is a personal complex situation that should be dealt with within the family of children this young. They're gonna have a lot of questions. They left that school confused. They felt embarrassed. They felt that what they said might've been wrong and now they're gonna be picked on because they didn't know what they were answering. And that's third and fourth grade. That's not even the first grade, potentially kindergarten, second grade. Who knows what happened or how those kids are now impacted. So it's, it's inappropriate at that age. My children, our children are brought up with love and understanding. And we are gonna speak to them about these things when they're brought up in our home. We're gonna be there to answer all their questions and support them and have them understand all their peers in a respectful, loving manner. They're not gonna be brought up, this isn't gonna be brought up at school at this time in their life. It's completely inappropriate. We were not asked permission. We were not given warning that this was gonna be brought up. We wouldn't have allowed it at the school. Or if it was gonna be brought up, moment like very soon, we didn't have any options. We would talk about it at home to prepare them. This was inappropriate. You also don't ask children this in a group of people. This is a very personal matter. If they want to use a different pronoun, if they identify as something else other than their birth gender, that's their personal decision as to when and how they out themselves or, or, or ask for that. You don't do that in a group of people. All right, there's, there's many things wrong with this. The emails like 10 bullet points, along the way, three paragraphs. It's very long. I'm not going to go into all of it. Those are the biggest problems I have. The most of the biggest problem is also um, the response that I've seen that um, the principal, and it's only happened at Flaherty. I haven't heard of any other schools having brought this up, but the principal did send out a response to some of the complaints and basically said that our children have gotten it wrong, that they must have said something, they must have misheard or misunderstood. So on one hand, they think it's appropriate. They think the children are old enough to broach this subject with them in school. They think it's okay, independent of their parents. But on the other hand, now they're calling the children stupid that they didn't get it correct, that they're lying or they're inaccurate. Which is it? Are they old enough for this question that you brought up or are they not ready? Because now you're now you have to pull the pulling not ready card and they don't understand it. So I felt disrespected. I felt insulted. I felt my children were disrespected and I just don't think it's appropriate. And then we have large concerns. We have many friends, many other parents with these same concerns. And like my husband said, luckily this meeting is happening tonight, I think for your benefit, because we just learned about this Saturday and the emotions are ramping up about this and it's like a wildfire. Thank you both for being here. We did receive a number of emails and I spoke to Chris prior to this meeting just for everyone else's information. Um, and he did inform us um, that this is probably gonna be a widespread, but I've asked Mr. Lee to, to address it, to, to, to respond. Well, I, I mean, I address it by, I believe Ms. Soros reached out to both of you to try to schedule a meeting um, and we'll, we'll do that as quickly as we can. We would agree that it was not developmentally appropriate and the staff member has been spoken to, um, but we'll continue the conversations uh, when we get a chance to sit down with Ms. Soto. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who wants to make a public comment that didn't sign in? No, I see any of Okay, great. Okay, we're going to move into our agenda. So routine matters. Um, we are going to welcome our new school committee members. We certainly are. Uh, and to do that, I have asked Ms. Vernaza to introduce our newest members of the school committee. All right. I'm just meeting them too, so it feels funny to introduce you, but... Um, We'll start with Will because he's our senior and he's actually not new, right? You're returning? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's an old hat at this. But um, I asked teachers and guidance counselors, and Mr. Scully is here, so he probably could add some things, but um, to give us a brief overview of each of these students. So um, independent, selfless, driven, and respectful are words used to describe Mr. Rafty. There is no doubt that even with one year left, Braintree is already a better place because of Will and his determination to better this community. He's a natural born leader. Will steps up when others won't. He lives his life with integrity, even when others may not agree. He is self-aware, proud, and has a confidence that will not allow others to influence him in a negative way. He has the ability to do this all while having the utmost respect and understanding for others' opinions. Welcome back, Will. Yeah. <laughs> yes, nice to see you. 
Um, next, we have Samantha. Do you go by Samantha? Samantha or Sam is fine. Okay. Um, Samantha is a current junior who is very committed to the school community. Samantha is a board member for Environmental Club, active member of Model UN, Girls That Lift, National Arts Honor Society, and the Girls Golf Team. Sam enjoys volunteering her time to different community organizations and has a great passion for linguistics. She is currently learning Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Latin. Welcome. This wood looks very proud. I was going to say, did you match her there? <laughs> um, Calvin. Um, Calvin is also a junior with us. Um, Calvin's guidance counselor, Ms. Ruse, said Calvin is a bright young man who keeps on top of all of his school assignments and test preparation. Calvin is also involved in our music department as an instrumentalist in our wind ensemble. And I think he will do a great job helping represent our students in town matters. Welcome. And Anika or Anika? Anika. Anika, is that right? All right. Anika is an extremely, also a junior, is an extremely hardworking student who has excelled in her academics at Braintree High School. Anika demonstrates her ability and maturity in the classroom and with the respect she shows her peers and teachers. Anika is not only an academic standout at Braintree High School, she is a kind, compassionate, and genuine young lady who will no doubt be a future leader in our community. You guys sound exactly who we need to be leading our school. Welcome to all of you. Yes, welcome. Yeah. All right. I need to ask a question. Why did you want to serve on the school committee? I started. I, since, I, yeah, since you're already uh, well, experienced. This is my returning year. Um, I had a great experience last year serving as a student representative. Um, I've always been really interested and passionate about getting involved in politics around me. I really want to study political science when I go to college. Um, and then I've really been involved in leadership roles. I'm student body president over at the high school, um, and I just really enjoyed the opportunity to do it last year, and I thought it was a great choice to return. Excellent. Thank you. Sam? So um, education is something that I place a lot of value upon and being able to represent my school, my peers, and having input to better all of our experiences at the high school and throughout the school system is something that I am eager to have a role in. And I believe that doing change, making change is through your actions, not just your opinions or words. And that's why I'd like to be active. Excellent. Calvin? Uh, I've always been intri intrigued in uh, student leadership. Um, I've found it easier and easier over the years in, in the high school to uh, get more involved with the community. And I thought this was another way that I could do that. Um, uh, it drives me to want to get involved with my community, which um, you know, it's always something that I'm really passionate about. Excellent. Nika? Uh, yeah, as Kevin said, I was first, um, you know, I first started participating in community service in eighth grade when I was selected for a nonprofit from like East Middle School and the staff there called Project 351. And I'm really involved with that nonprofit. And it's just a youth leadership nonprofit where we um, help enrich our schools through community service and volunteering. And I think that was my first start to seeing like the impact you can have in your community and how supporting everyone is. And ever since that, I've become like more involved with my intra club, like community clubs like Best Buddies and just volunteering and doing community service, which is a big passion of mine. And I realize the impact that it has and school communities are definitely like a great way to, you know, involve your school, like whole school and see the impact you can have and advocate for other people's voices. And I'm just really glad I got the opportunity. I right. forgot to mention that we, we saw an, uh, at the Summer Mass um, Superintendents Association um, present uh, yeah. seminar. She spoke at 10 represented brain trade. That's part of Project there. 351. <laughs> I'm familiar with her work on 351. So you're a, a wonderful addition. So thank you all very much for your willingness to serve. Um, later in our agenda, there's a, a every every school committee meeting will ask you to to give a report of what's going on at the high school. Anything you want to raise, any 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 activities, any concerns you guys have, because you're really our eyes and ears in the schools. None of us have been in high school for quite a while, so we appreciate uh, you being here, and we'll we'll ask you and maybe you can let us know how uh, getting back to school, how how uh, opening day, all that. We appreciate it, Senda. <laughs> Moving on. Minutes. Minutes. The open session minutes from July 18th, 2022. Are there any revisions? Seeing none. Motion will accept, Madam Chair. I have a motion by Mr. Devin. Yeah. Second by Ms. Saros. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Communications and commendations. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in your packet, you will find the July 2022 MASC bulletin for your reading pleasure. Um, you know, beyond that, obviously, school has opened across the board, uh, a smoother start than we had last year, particularly at the high school level. Um, just to, if I can get this to move to the next slide. Um, before school began, we had a number of orientation programs at middle schools and the high school. You can see some of our student leaders there welcoming the grade nine. Uh, on the right is a picture from Hollis. Hollis had its annual 9-11 um, um, honoring the EMS personnel, the police, and the fire from the town. Uh, so they were able to come to the school. Uh, I, I bring it up because it is the 20th anniversary for Hollis in, in having this event. Uh, which is a, a great favorite of the uh, men and women who serve in our emergency personnel services in the town, but also for the students as well. So, you know, there's just some positive pictures that we could find about schools opening. Each one of our schools is up and running successfully. Um, we are still managing some, some struggles with transportation, uh, as I think you all know at this point. Uh, there's a national driver shortage. It affects us as well. Uh, and despite our best efforts, we are still short staffed. Uh, it will get incrementally better as, as not only our drivers, but also our families get more accustomed to the schedules that we're running. Um, but that is a work in progress. So, um, you know, I ask for some patience on the part of, of the families that require transportation. Uh, we are doing the very best we can. Um, and ideally, we'll, we have a couple of trainees in our pipeline that we think will come on board shortly, which might help alleviate some of that stress. Uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, this year, uh, we had the uh, Braintree Police Department present to our East and South Middle School staffs around uh, emergency re responses and safety and security. They will be visiting our high school staff on September 19th, and then on September 27th, they, they will meet with all of our elementary staff. So just to make you aware of that and, and to thank the police department for their, their contributions in this and their willingness to come out on multiple dates to make sure that all of our staff is appropriately trained. It's somewhat of a refresher course, as I think you all know, we, we had a, a major professional development day a couple of years ago around safety and security. Uh, so their presence in our schools is really um, to update that. To give you a sense of where we stand uh, in terms of enrollments, um, up on the screen, you can see uh, some of the numbers that we have. Uh, if I move over just a little bit, you can see that the high school at this point in time has 1,672 students. East is 977, uh, south at 514. And then you get into the elementary schools, which I have to swing back and forth. Flaherty is uh, 288, Highlands at 408, Hollis at uh, 332. If I scroll down just a bit, or attempt to anyway. This is Ross at 203, I'm sorry, Liberty at 300, Ross at 203. What it really represents is some increases in the elementary level. Uh, although from a district perspective, we are down approximately 66 kids from um, last year in uh, January. Uh, our elementary numbers are going up. The high school is uh, gone up a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, both middle schools, there's a kind of a dip going through the, those two middle schools at this point in time. So again, what we're seeing is some return in terms of the elementary level. Um, a slight increase at the high school level uh, and a little bit of a decrease at both middle schools. But on a positive note, if you look at the class sizes on the left hand side of the screen, uh, you know, our biggest classes are really. If you look at Morrison grade four, those in essence represent our biggest classes, 22, 23, which for an elementary grade at that level is not bad at all. And if you look at some of our other numbers, they're very favorable. We are keeping an eye on Liberty grade one, um, but that's a manageable number as well. Uh, so we, we are still registering kids, uh, to be honest. So these numbers are, are not final. As you know, we report our numbers to the state on October 1. Uh, so there'll be movement between here and October 1 on, in terms of these numbers. But again, good class sizes. Uh, the trend that we, we thought we'd see in terms of an increase in terms of kids coming back, right now it appears to be at the elementary level. Excuse so, me, yeah. could you repeat uh, the numbers of the elementary school again, please? Yep, it's, um, so 
I'm sorry, I, I wish I could wish I was smart enough to scroll this down. At Ross, you have 203. At Morrison, you have 300. At Liberty, you have 371. At Hollis, you have 332. We got one left. Clarity, I believe, is 288, and I am right. What was Highlands? 408. 408. Okay, thank you. So, what was the increase at the elementary level from last year? In at this point, I know it's it's still a fluid number. Totally, it's about 50 kids. Some of that is kindergarten movement. Um, and so, right now, the numbers in Manacquit look a little bit lower because we added a section to Hall's kindergarten. Um, but compared to last year, it, those numbers are up. And so even though from a district perspective, we're down 66, it, a lot of that number is in the high school number uh, in terms of specialized programs. And so that some of that's going to flesh itself out in the next 30 days once it gets to October 1. And what would you say the average class size is at the elementary school right now? 19, 20? Looking at the numbers, I'd say about 18. Uh, we have some very low numbers. If you look at Hollis in grade one, you get 14, 14, and 13. And we still have some very low we do, but what you see is are what we would consider to be good but healthier numbers in terms of the 18s and 19s. Uh, those are good numbers to have. Uh, they're advantageous for teaching and learning, um, but at the same time, it indicates that kids are returning to the school system. Excellent. Any other questions from the committee about the enrollment? Anything else on? No, nope, that was my last bit in terms of uh, just the opening of school. Uh, it continues to be a work in progress, but we're off to a good start. Great, thank you. Um, moving on to gifts to school. Um, cradles to crayons, gifts to school, 100 backpacks, pre-K through grade five. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna read all of these and then we'll make one motion at the end um, to accept all, all uh, gifts collectively. Um, excuse me, so cradles to crayons, gifts, 100 backpacks, for students pre-K through grade five. Ross Elementary School gifts to school $2,000, 1,500 from the members of the TN and Temple and $500 from the TN and Temple. I'm sorry, one is from the members and one is from master. the master. I'm not gonna pronounce it right. TN and Temple, the master. Um, we'll just leave it at that. So fifteen hundred and five hundred for two thousand. One check in the amount of five hundred dollars from senior or oh, senior master. Is it Sai? Sai of the Tian Temple. Okay. So fifteen hundred from the members and five hundred from the master. Bay State textile, Textiles five checks totaling one hundred sixty three dollars and seventy five cents. Braintree High School Athletic Department gifts to schools one thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Checks and cash deposited from the Braintree High School Boys Soccer. And then there was one addition, East Middle School gifts to schools for $5,000, um, one check in the amount of $5,000 from an anonymous donor to be used exclusively for East Middle School students in financial need. The donation states that the need will be determined by Mr. Sheehan or his designee. With that, do I have a motion to accept all so gifts? I have, okay. I have a motion by Mr. Devin and a second by Ms. Saros. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is unanimous. Moving on, uh, consideration of trip approvals. So we have uh, several trips to uh, bring before you this evening, and we are fortunate enough to have um, Gordon uh, here to represent the Quebec trip. I believe this is similar to trips we have taken in the past, but I'll let her sit and explain that better to you. It is, thank you for allowing me to come tonight. Uh, why don't you come up here? I have uh, Madame Cortez, who is our French and Spanish teacher at South, joining me. She has been on this trip before. We have not been able to move on the trip since 2019 for obvious reasons. We are excited at the prospect to be able to um, give this opportunity to our eighth grade French students, which is a four day cultural excursion in Quebec. It is a bus trip. It is both East and South. And it has always been very well received. Um, in your packet, you do have a copy of the itinerary. It is, um, it's an exciting trip. I've been on the trip as a chaperone um, and as a person who does not speak French, but speaks Spanish, I still found it incredible. It was truly an awesome experience. And um, that's pretty much it. Are there any questions from the committee? Yeah. Ms. Sowers. When did you say this was? Sorry. It's um, May 18th through the 21st. 
And I will say there is one, the only change in this trip through, it's the same company we've used many times. With COVID, it is now required to have proof of vaccination to go to Canada. That's Canada's rule, not ours. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. So this, it's still Jump Street. It's the same Correct. company you've yes. always used, yeah. And you figure about 50 kids? That's what we hope for. And the cost will vary a little bit depending on how many kids go. And there's insurance parents can- offer. There is insurance that students are encouraged to buy that basically they can cancel for no reason. Okay and get their money back. There is always, um, it's always done within how much time away from the trip for if they don't have the insurance, then they can still get money back if they cancel. Percentage. It's just percentages, depending on um, how far away they are from the trip, just because there are expenditures that happen leading up to the trip, obviously. And the ratio of chaperone to student, eight to one? It is eight, nine. Is it? I think it's no, it's eight to it's eight to one. Oh. Eight to one. And there will be a, a mix of teachers and parents. And a nurse. And a nurse. And a nurse, yes. Great. Yeah, and Karen, do you have a question? Ms. Tuffy. Uh, so I just wondered uh how the timing of this uh field trip worked with um MCAS states. Uh, are the uh, math and science MCAS finished by um the science MCAS is right after this trip. So yes, that is not ideal. <laughs> but that's that has traditionally been the weekend that they have gone and they have not seen a dip in their scores as a result. Thank you. Do the kids miss three, three they days? Two days. They miss three two days. Friday. Excuse me. They come home Sunday. Because it's a school trip. School trip. School trip. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Do the chair? Um it's probably now. Is there financial um, help if students can't afford to do this for their families? Students are encouraged to do um, fundraising and there has been fundraising done through Ms. Cortez and Ms. Butler who couldn't be here tonight to for that. The Jump Street does not have financial aid available. But um, we do do a fundraising individual. We have a website that we use that students can sell um, it's a pasta fundraiser for students can, that way they can sell, um, you know, pasta. It's an online thing that we, we help them with and coordinate. Um, and we found that one gives them the biggest percentage of profit. So I think they get to keep about 40% of profit. Um, so we do offer that. And I know at least at South, there has been financial assistance through the principal's office. Um, you know, for certain families that that request it, All right, okay. you know that they try. It would be so much. I was going to say, I, I believe the same happens at East as well. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? It's nice to meet you. Thank you for being here, both of you. Good to see you as always. <laughs> Thank you. Um, with that, do we have a motion to accept the trip to Quebec? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Devon and a second by Ms. Saros. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bon voyage. <laughs> uh, <boat. laughs> uh, also in your packet uh, is uh, another trip that takes our students and staff out of state down to Providence for the Providence Bruins games. Uh, this is a trip that we've taken multiple times in the past where we go and share our musical talents with the Providence Bruins. Um, you can see there's two separate groups that would be going, one from Highlands, grades four and five on November 11th. And then the second group, uh, grades 6th, 7th, and 8th from South Middle School on November 18th. Again, uh, during, uh, in, I believe, intermission or the beginning of the game, they sing America the Beautiful. Uh, parents provide the transportation down, but this is something we've done almost every year that I've been here, and it's a wonderful opportunity for kids. Any questions from the committee? I just want to clarify that parents are responsible for transportation and also supervising their children. Yep, during the just game. Just go down and they, right during the game, they just go down and sing, which I think is a great opportunity for them to showcase their uh, their talents and bring absolutely and, and enjoy hockey. It's a wonderful thing and and stake in a game. Yeah. So, any other comments or questions from the committee? Can you just sorry, sorry. the chair? <laughs> what um what was the first the date of South again? Uh, south is November eighteenth. November eighteenth. Yep, and Highlands is November eleventh. Yep. Thank you. Yep. With that, do I have a motion? No so moved. <laughs> Everybody wants him to go. Everybody yeah. wants to go. All right. Um, 
I have a motion by Ms. Saros, a second by Mr. Devin. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Moving right along. Uh, let's see. From the superintendent, nurses appointments. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, the first thing in your packet, you will see the resumes of two nursing candidates we have for positions. As I think you all know at this point, it is the school committee that appoints nurses. Um, the superintendent cannot. So before you, I offer two candidates that we uh, want to have working for us in our schools uh, and happy to answer any questions that you might have that I can possibly answer. But I think if you view their experience, you can see they're very qualified. Through the chair. Um, where will they be appointed and um, to what schools? Uh, that's a great question that I'm not sure I have the answer to. Um, I do. Do you? Yeah. Um, Sharon Heritage on the Islands and Stephanie Keller's preschool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Jeff, full disclosure, I did go to Stephanie. with Miss Heritage. <laughs> very nice person. Personal recommendation? Oh, yes, <laughs> person. Great. Any questions on the candidates? Do I have a motion? To approve. I have a motion back to Devin and a second by Ms. Saros to approve the appointments of the two nurses. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Also in your packet, uh, you have seen the updates to handbooks uh, at the middle and elementary level. Uh, in your packet are also the proposed changes for the high school, the high school and Dr. Scully uh, came to policy the other night to, to kind of review some of those updates, uh, but we would be looking for a second reading minimally on the middle and the elementary level, but we were going to take something out of order first, and I've completely blown past that. Okay, uh, the dress code policy, we want to take that out of order so that we can discuss that at the same time if we're going to be approving um, handbooks, for the, high, the handbook for the high school and middle school. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this again would be a second reading of a revised dress code for the middle and high school level. Uh, you folks had an opportunity to review it uh, the last time we met. Uh, we've made no changes to it since that date. So uh, happy to answer any questions, um, but we'd be looking for approval of this new dress code so we can insert it in the new handbooks. Okay, I have questions. Yes. <laughs> Um, I spoke to Mr. Lee earlier, and I also spoke to the chair of the policy subcommittee earlier. So the policy, I, I don't have any questions with the policy themselves. I did have a question on the no hoods or sunglasses allowed, which is explained um, at the high school level. Um, but I was asking if the paragraph that is on the current dress code policy, if a student is wearing an item of clothing not permitted by the handbook guidelines, parents, guardian, guardians will be contacted to bring a change of clothes to school for the student or the school will provide clothing if needed. The student will not be able to, re to resume his or her regular schedule until his or her clothing is modified. So I, I'm asked that that paragraph be added to the dress code, just so you know what the consequences are if a child was not adhering to the policy. Does anybody have any comments or? Concerns with that. That makes sense. So, um, it's pretty straightforward. And um, did you want to add anything else as far as the dress code from the policy committee? No, I think the the uh, opening um, sentence, the responsibility for dress and grooming, I suppose I need to speak in their adult care privileges. It's good opening. And then, uh, are we going to add a consequence after that sentence? I would suggest that after that sentence, right? Similar to the prelude to the policy itself. So, oh, is everybody comfortable with that? So, this is the second reading with those revisions. Do I have a, a motion to approve the dress code with the revisions that we just discussed? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a motion by that. I have a motion by Ms. Tuppy and a second by Mr. Devin. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. So moving from there, then we would again return to the uh, middle and elementary handbooks uh, for a second reading approval uh, for those. And again, Dr. Scully has been kind enough to join us this evening. If you have any questions about the proposed changes to the Braintree High School handbook. Nice to see you, Dr. Scully. 
Does anybody have any questions or comments or for Dr. Scully? Do you want to highlight anything, Ms. Tuffy, at a at a high level? No, I think perhaps if Dr. Scully could give an overview, that would be best because uh evening everyone. Um, we had a chance to, to talk about the four uh, proposed leader in everybody's pack yeah. Yeah. Um, with uh, with noon. Uh, that was very it was a productive uh, conversation. Appreciate to have a chance to talk about. Um, some of the changes are at the very least at the, at the end talking about bark is more sort of district boilerplate and then some other changes are specific to um, high school issues. Speak a little bit about credit recovery and, and that element. Credit recovery, I think the most important change is really um, just the fact that we're calling it credit recovery, right? So previously the section was more about um, here's what happens when you fail, and it was written with a, uh, it was written under, uh, it was written when there would have been a traditional summer school at high school, which would have been the primary means for the to make up credit. Um, instead, uh, as things have changed, and this happened even before uh, the pandemic, and we all found out about how productive and enjoyable remote learning could be, but sort of credit recovery was moving that direction anyhow. Um, and so what we tried to do was lay out the different um, ways in which a student may be taking courses outside of Braintree High School. One for um, recovering uh, one for making up a slight failure. I don't know how you how you would define that uh, or sort of call that one where a student needs to make up an entire course. And then also there's a section for when a student would be taking coursework um, that might be above and beyond what they're doing at the school because uh, that's an option which is more available to students now because of the option of learning online. So it's not that you would have to get on the train and go to town at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which obviously isn't compatible with the high school schedule, students can pursue other courses. So we just wanted to be clear about what those route were, what those routes were and what those options were for students. Thank you. Are there any other specific questions? I was very happy to see Bark yep. put into the handbook um, just for parents to, to reference. Is there any other questions or comments? Okay. Oh, sorry, Ms. Lynch. I just wanted to know if you wanted me to list the uh, topics that um, the four topics Thursday. There was there was a class rank eligibility um, to, be, to be included in the class rank. They have to be enrolled for two full semesters. Uh, the valedictorian salutatorian are named after the third marking term and they must be enrolled for four full semesters at Branch High School to be eligible. Uh, there was a section about excused absences. Uh, two days are allowed to represent their community athletic club or other outside organization at a national or in international conference or competition. Um, And uh, as far as I, I thought the change to credit recovery is, was a very good one. Uh, there was also mention of outside coursework. We do have sometimes have students uh, who, uh, for example, may be very advanced in mathematics and, and um, take uh, college courses and can gain uh, college credit like that. So I felt that these were very um, Positive, uh, positive changes that would be good in the handbook. And finally, there was the athletic department update where um, that added head language about uh, liability and supervision of athletic and extracurricular activities. So, um, good synopsis. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Lynch. Jeff, I just want to echo what you were saying with the credit recovery. Uh, that's what a lot of kids are behind from the remote learning. And we have that remote learning now. We have an active learner on the back end. You can get a lot accomplished. As Stephanie said, you, I mean, even kids that want to take advanced classes, 
we got to start using that. So that's kind of a tool we have now going forward, which I really think we should look into and kind of bolster. Definitely get the kids back up to speed. Thank you. Any other comments, sir? I have a question, actually. Thank you, of course. After you, sir. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Devon. <laughs> okay, the bark um, section, does that dovetail in with what your know, safety group is doing? I mean, do they work in congruence? Because it's no, uh, it's it, different. Well, Bark is a, a software that, in essence, monitors the accounts of everybody in the right? They're all our accounts. And it works for disturbing phrases or, or commentary that we want to address either with a family or a student. So it, it, the notification in the handbook is more to make all parents aware and all students aware of that. We, we do have this, this software that is running in the background that is looking for things that would be problematic so that we can address them. So it's more of a notification. It can, it can lead to some solutions to security issues, but that's not its primary focus. Um, you know, a lot of the time it's students who are, are talking about something that could be self-harmful, uh, things of that nature. So it is our ability to kind of monitor the, the traffic that's on our network to make sure that we're supporting everybody where they need to be supported. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I know historically it went out on Parents Square. Yep. But it's nice to actually see in the handbook so people can refer to it. Yeah, and at the end of every school year, we put out notice that we're going to shut it off for the summer. And at the beginning of every school year, we, we send out another notice that we're turning it back on just so there's some expectation that parents can have. Communication. Yep. Okay. Make a course. Thank you. Right. First, I just want to welcome our, our new members of the uh, school committee and welcome back. Uh, I, I just want to mention um, uh, this year um, some of the programs that uh, Dr. Scully has in place. And one in particular was uh, college-like uh, freshman orientation, and uh, I just want to commend you. Uh, did a great, great job. This, it's really helping students uh, that come into the school, which is big, uh, scary building sometimes, you know, uh, acclimate and really um, I, I watched some of the breakout groups as, as I left and it's really a good program. And, and I appreciate uh, you and the staff putting that together for the students. Appreciate that. And, and thank you for, I don't know, if others heard what was what Mayor Kakoris is leaving out is that he was kind enough to speak to the ninth graders. I will say that we had a current student, a recent grad, and a more veteran grad. <laughs> I'll let everybody decide which one I fell into, but, uh, but you could really tell with the students that it was, uh, you know, that, that it grabbed people's attention. We have a, at least uh, we have some students who uh, who led some groups here as well. So, um, so it was a nice afternoon. Thanks. Nice job. Thank you. So with that, we would be seeking approval for all three handbooks with the updates that you've been made aware of uh, at this point in time. Are there any questions on the elementary and middle school from anybody? Most of those were housekeeping. Most of them were housekeeping. Dates and names and updates. All right. Well, then with that, do I have a motion to approve high school, the middle school, and the elementary school handbooks? So Chair. I have a motion by Ms. Tuffy. Okay. A second by Ms. Cobble Mayor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. Dr. Scully for being here. I appreciate it. Dr. Scully. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Administrative updates. Thank you again, Madam Chair. So in your packets, uh, you will find two lists of materials, one from the English department, one from the science department. Uh, these are items that we as a district would consider surplus. Um, we are not allowed to do anything with it until you as a, as a body declare them as surplus as well. Uh, most of the English materials will be recycled. Uh, they're past end of life. Uh, and we've moved on to different curriculum. Uh, the same is relatively true of the science department. We'll recycle where we can. Um, but we are holding on to these materials for you folks to declare them surplus so we can take the appropriate action to dispose of them. Any discussion? Seems pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Cycle what you can. Absolutely. Okay. Um, with that, do I have a motion to cycle? <laughs> what, what are we uh, yeah, asking it to recycle? What are we? Uh, all you need to do is to clear them as surplus. Okay. And then so just we take it from there. Okay. <laughs> just clear them as surplus. Thank you. Yes. So move. <laughs> I have a motion by Mr. Devon. Second. And second by Ms. Saros. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Once again.
Yeah. Uh, also in your packet, you will see uh, the 2022-2023 school calendar. We are seeking a revision on one of our half-day professional development days. Uh, if you look on the calendar in pink, uh, May 16th was supposed to be a half-day for professional development. Uh, to Ms. Tuppy's point, uh, that happens to be the math MCAS at the high school. We got the schedule late, um, so we are seeking to move that 16th to the 31st to accommodate that change. So we'd ask for a revision of the school calendar based on that. Nice catch, Ms. Tuffy. <laughs> um, any questions or comments? Everything else is the same? Yep. Okay. Correct. I have a motion to, or do, is it, do we need to approve the new calendar? Yeah, you have to. Motion to amend, Madam Chair. Motion to amend. Thank you, Mr. Devin. Yep. Is that a motion? Is yes, it is. You okay. Yes. I have a motion by Mr. Devin. Second? Second. Second by Ms. Tuffy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we have now moved to the from the school committee student representative update. So if I could ask you collectively or individually, I don't know if uh, if you've create if you've um, prepared something ahead of time or you just want to give us an idea of how the beginning of school went. Sorry, so thank you. Um, basically, we're all excited to start off the year for normally in the first time for a while. I know it, for me personally, it was really exciting to kind of start off the year with. Um, no regulations that we've been experienced for obvious reasons in the past years. Um, and it's just going really well. Classes are back to normal. Sports have started up and clubs will be um, commencing their meetings in the coming weeks. So I'm just really excited to get back to kind of a normal high school feeling. Anything else you want to um, I had one question actually just on an earlier item. Um, it was just in relation to the talking about the loss of credit and the dress code policy. When students are pulled from class um, after receiving a dress code violation, um, are those absences from classes excused or do they count towards their five missed classes that could receive a no credit for that term? That's a really good question. Really good question. I would suggest that they should be excused because we've, we've precipitated it. I'll have to have a conversation with Dr. Scully to see how they're presently recording them. Usually when a dress code violation has occurred, it, it's not a long process unless we're waiting for clothes to come in from home, which can obviously make it a little bit longer, but they should be excused. And I'll check with Dr. Scully and make sure that's the case. All right. Thank you for the clarification. Yep. Excellent question. That's all for us for today. Great. Thank you. I look forward to your uh, reports every month. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, consideration of second reading of our dates, our meeting dates. Okay, there was, there was one revision revision for the school committee meetings. Um, January 10th is actually January 9th. Um, I'm gonna read off the dates that are definite, the, the tentative dates, um, as we get closer to those dates, we'll determine whether or not that those meetings are required, but I'm just gonna read them off. So our next meeting will be October 3rd. They're all here, um, they're all here right now at 6.30 at Colbert, but there has been some discussion and we're gonna we'll take that forward where we're gonna move a few of the meetings um, to schools. So I'm gonna take a few of them on the road. Um, more details to, to be worked out. Do we have specific? We do not yet have specific dates. Uh, we have uh, over the summer made sure that it is possible to do so. Uh, it is. Uh, so working with the chair, we, we can make some determinations about where and when, um, but we're we're prepared to, Take the show on the road. Take the show on the road, okay. Well, we wanna see the kids, we wanna get into the schools, so that's great. Um, okay, so our meetings are October 3rd, November 7th, December 5th, January 9th, January 23rd, February 6th, March 6th, March 20th, April 3rd, April 10th, April 24th, May 8th, May 22nd, and June 5th. Um, there's a lot more meetings in March and April because we're in the middle of the budget season. Um, that's why we meet often. And again, these dates are subject to change, and there are a number of tentative dates if required, depending on um, if there's anything that's time critical or anything that we need to meet for uh, in the interim. So those are our dates. Any discussion? If everyone's seen these dates for a couple of months now, we're all good. Okay, so just do we need to approve it or do we, are we just going to an actual approval. I don't think it's approval. Just that we're changed them from time to time. So it's just a, an acknowledgement. Yep. Okay. So moving on. Policy and education. So we've already covered the revised dress code, but I will refer to Ms. Tuffy. Her report. Um, so the policy and education subcommittee met um, on Thursday, um, the 8th. 
and uh, we reviewed the uh, proposed changes to the dress code. No, I'm sorry, to the high school uh, handbook. Uh, we also um, talked about the logistics of one of our meetings to the various schools. Um, we felt that uh, one of the topics that we discussed was uh, communication between the uh, schools, the department heads, and the school committee. And we felt that um, uh, visiting those schools was a, a positive thing for us to do. We could see the environment, and uh, sometimes the kids would make a presentation. So that's been missing because of the pandemic, and, and uh, um, we would like to return to those visits. Um, and Mr. Um, Lee has been investigating how, how to accomplish that with his spoken to be cam over the summer. So hopefully that will go through. And uh, secondly, also, um, we noted that uh, because of uh, changes in technology and, and which are generally a good thing, uh, we are not getting the information from the school principals that we used to. We don't get the newsletters. Uh, uh, we are not in, we not are sometimes unaware of events that are going on at all the schools. So we have asked uh, Mr. Lee to uh, ask the principals to include uh, the school committee as a group on Parents Square whenever they send out a newsletter so we'll know what's happening in the schools and uh, also uh, if there are any special events that um, we would like they would like us to attend like uh, school graduations or plays that um, we school committee has had a presentation presence at, in the past and we'd like to return to now that things are are getting back to normal so um the other item that we spoke about in policy, educate, policy and education uh, subcommittee was endorsement of the fair share amendments. Uh, this is a ballot question that will be on the November 8th ballot. Uh, as, uh, so Massachusetts has a flat tax and uh, this ballot uh, question is um, approval for a, a, a constitutional amendment that that they can tax um, a portion of the a person's annual income over one million dollars. So if you make under a million dollars, you don't get taxed. But if you make over a million dollars, um, you get uh, taxed an additional uh, four percentage points on that first every dollar after that. So um, the state legislature has already already approved this. And as I said, it needs it needs um, voter approval to become uh, to amend the constitution in Massachusetts. And the importance that we've seen the importance of uh, budget, um, the impacts of the pandemic on our budget. Uh, we fortunately had grants and uh, and federal money and uh, increase in Chapter Seven Seventy money, but um, those grants are going to be going away, and and. This fair share amendment will provide a long term sustainable source of funding for education and transportation. So, um, I'm going to the mayor to talk a little bit more about the fair share amendment. Um, and, uh, and thank you, Kathy. Um, as, as Ms. Tuffy mentioned, this is uh, the fair share amendment. It is a ballot question in November. It would ask voters if they'd be willing to create a small 4% tax 
only on the portion of a person's annual income over a million dollars. Um, that means that uh, the money would be constitutionally earmarked for public education, um, colleges, K through uh, 12. Um, it would also be used for transportation, including roads and bridges and, and so forth. Um, that would be expected to generate $2 billion annually into the Commonwealth. Um, and it would make things more equitable because um, according to mass budget, Massachusetts households that make less um, per year are a larger portion of the income in state and local act, uh, taxes than households that in the top 20%. So for example, um, anybody making uh, over a million dollars is paying 6.8%. People that are in the 60% bracket um, up to 122,600 pay 9.2%. And the bottom 20% who are making less than 22,500 pay 10%. So, um, you know, this would be more equitable um, because Massachusetts has a flat tax. Now this would, that's why they need to know if people, the voters will agree to pass this. And as we know, during COVID, uh, the rich have gotten richer and working families, seniors and small businesses have suffered. Uh, many school districts like Braintree uh, are facing severe budget shortfalls and fiscal constraints. So the, the fair share amendment would provide much needed tax revenues so the public school system can provide the essential academic support and mental health services needed to address those significant learning gaps and social emotional needs of all of our students, which are not being funded. Um, there are many school committees that have already endorsed question one, including Amherst, Arlington, Burlington, uh, Cambridge, Greenfield, Lee, Leverett, Lexington, Malden, Medford, New Bedford, and North Adams. There are 80 labor unions, 50 local businesses, and 280 organizations uh, that support and endorse this, including the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, Massachusetts Association of Super School Superintendents, Citizens for Public Schools, Massachusetts Educational Justice Alliance. Um, uh, again, only the estimate is about approximately 2,000 people in the entire state only make this much. So it's obviously going to affect a very small amount, but we would see much um, needed revenue and, and uh, our schools could definitely use it and our roads and our sidewalks and, and things could definitely use it too. So I think this is a win-win. So we're asking the school committee to review um, the draft resolution that we've prepared that everybody should have, and you've got information about the fair share. Um, uh, I, if, is it, Kathy, you wanna, is there any questions? Yes, so uh, we have prepared a draft resolution uh, in support of the fair share amendment. Um, I, I think that um, there are already, uh, un there are already some states that have a, a millionaire's tax in place and has uh, been effective. Um, so um, Massachusetts would be the first to do to do so. So I. So, so you're asking the members, we will educate ourselves on this. I, I, would, I, I would hope that you could read the material through the materials and the resolution and then at our next school committee meeting, uh, if you have any um, comments or suggestions for changes in the resolution, we make them then and then take a vote whether to endorse or not to endorse. Okay, so you're asking the members of this committee to educate themselves on it, and then you're you're asking that we put on the next agenda for the October third meeting um, whether or not we will or will not endorse. Um, the fair yes. share amendment. Yeah, okay. We'll take it to a vote. And again, we'll take it to a vote. And again, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees has endorsed this, and that's why you're bringing it forward, and as well as other schools. Association of School Superintendents, okay. as well as a number of other schools. Uh, I think that as, um, you know, now that the primary election is over, and people turn, people are, these, these ballot questions are being certified, and people are becoming more aware of them. So, uh, it 
helps to uh, know that there's that we're supporting something like this that would make a difference in our on our financial health in Braintree. Thank you. We will take it up at the next meeting. Yeah, from the public. Um, there's no public questions at this point. No, sorry. Madam Chair, there is a, another policy that's up for a second uh, reading. Homeless student. Student policy. Oh, yes. Um, so the second, um, um, an update to the uh, homeless policy, um, which is based, what we're basically doing is just uh, modifying practice that we already have. Uh, Braintree adheres to both McKinney uh, Vento law regarding student homelessness. It allows students who uh, become homeless who uh, remain in their school of origin um, and um, provides um, transportation. And there's there's a, a liaison system. Our, our liaison will be Ms. Bernasa. We had a chance to read through these. Are there any questions on the homeless students' rights and services policy? Pretty much boil play. Pretty much the law. It comes right exactly. Yeah, so. The law. Yeah. So we just we it's just it's just putting in writing what we're already doing. Absolutely. With that, do I have a motion? Oh, second. I miss Pablo Mayor and a second by Miss Saro. So all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Um to answer your question, if you have questions about the fair share, you can certainly ask after the meeting. Um, but not as part of the meeting. And I know a number of other parents have arrived. Um, public comment. Public comment was at the beginning of the meeting. Um, we just to, to reiterate, we received all the emails. Um, Mr. Lee made a made a um, uh, announcement as far as steps going forward. So, um, and if you anybody wants to talk to any of us at the end of the meeting, we'd be happy to do so. Um, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Mr. Devon. I'm Ms. Saros. Mr. Devon. Aye. Ms. Duffy. Aye. Ms. Saros. Aye. Mayor Kukoros. Aye. Ms. Pablo Mayor. Aye. Mr. Lynch. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are adjourned.